The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 200 Hiring How Maple and starlight stood beneath the night sky as White Chocolate's front door clicked shut behind them, staring up into the world. A short concrete path away, a gravel street wound by, twisting and winding, and edged by steep grassy hills that formed the roofs of subterranean rooms, much like the one they just exited. A light breeze rustled by along the hilltops, causing the tall grass to bristle and sway, but it didn't extend to the road below. Maple shivered, stretching tiredly as the night air kissed her coat. Her legs felt weary and battered, her head was heavy and her spine stiff and slow, but the day was over. Soon she could get off her tender hooves and rest, spending a night sorting out her swirling feelings regarding white chocolate and her friends back in Riverfall, and then face another day filled with Valet and Howe and possibly Gerardo with the ever-present chance of catching another ferry home. Starlight? She nudged a saddlebag-wearing filly who had insisted on carrying a load to help, despite them containing the spent obsidian. So where are we going to sleep? Starlight looked up. Can we find a place here, or are we going to Grand Acorn? Well, Maple stretched, go tripling. First, I'm appreciating how nice it is to be outside, and then we need to find Valet or wait for her to find us. As if on cue, how his head poked above the grass on a nearby hill. Psst! He waved frantically, grinning his usual grin. Over here! Maple squinted back. Really? That grass is soaked and we just dried off. Maybe you should come down here instead? As you wish! How dove off the edge, barely using his wings and tucking into a roll to land at the base. He straightened up, ran a hoof across his mane, and trotted into the street. Were you successful in your quest, my comrades? We found what we were looking for, Maple replied, pacing out to the road herself. It was eventful. And now we're ready to find a place to sleep. You're going to keep following us, aren't you? How shrugged merrily. Sure am. Fine. Maple turned to walk down the road. Then we need a hotel. She paused. Where's Valet? How grinned. Oh, her? She was summoned by the pager in her hat, muttered something about having no idea what for or when she would be back, and not to wait for her. Really? Starlight narrowed her eyes. Are you sure? Maple frowned, looking in both directions down the street to see if any ponies were coming. She just left. Pretty much? Apologetically, Hob shrugged again. No offense, Maple sighed, but that sounds suspicious. Starlight blinked, thinking, she did leave earlier for a while, remember? Yes, but uh, Maple bit her lip. That time, she told us in advance, and we talked about where she would leave us. This time, you're here, and I'm sorry, I don't really trust you yet. She nodded at Howe. Nah, it's cool. Howe shook his head. The Howinator is familiar with these low-trust situations. Mercenary by trade, remember? Hold on, Starlight offered, pointing a hoof. Doesn't Valet have that magic stone that's tied to his? Meeple... If we're worried about why she left or where she's going, we could call her. Maple smiled down at Starlight. That's a good idea. How can we do that? Well, how shuffled, pulling his soundstone out of his mane. Sort of. Remember, they require mana power on both ends to activate, and she's no unicorn. What does happen is that one end glows when the other is powered. So, if any little unicorn fillies want to give this a little juice, we can see if she'll pick up. She'll need to be near a power source, though, like another unicorn or some exposed mana circuitry, and she didn't live all that long ago and might still be flying. Starlight? Maple looked down, mindful of the filly's recently taxed horn. Do you want to try? Starlight rubbed her forehead with a hoof. Uh, maybe, she swallowed. Sure, I will. Give it here. How offered a stone in an outstretched wing. Weakly, Starlight lit her horn, conjuring a pair of sparks and no spell, and held it close. The stone began to glow, its internal vortex spitting slowly. Well, that'll do it. How pull the stone back? If she picks up, she picks up. 
Being the mistrustful types, I imagine you'll want to wait right here and go nowhere I offer to lead you until we hear back. Does that include staying here when you want us to? Starlight asked, still rubbing her horn. Uh, how bit his lip. We might as well get moving somewhere, Maple decided. Even if it's just deeper into town, wherever we go, we know it won't be back to this place until morning. Hey, I can do that. How shrugged. Let's go then. Two major road bends into their journey. How shot a glance at Maple, then looked away. Then back again. Yes, Maple asked, walking gingerly and favoring every part of her body. Oh, nothing, How whistled nonchalantly. I was just thinking. I already told you of my secret motivation, but would it aid in your trust of the Howinator if he told you his super secret goal? Maple hesitated, then stopped, sitting down in the middle of the road. What? How stopped, too, looking as if he were bursting with unshared information. Stealthily, he scanned the surroundings, but it was a recently rainy night, and the section of the road wasn't flanked by any doorways. Well, he shadowed his face with a wing, whispering. When you were imprisoned in the Defense Force vile headquarters and launching a counterattack by stealing from their stolen goods, did you perchance happen across a mysterious gemstone encased in a glass sphere with flakes of gold? Preferably one with a sinister, evil aura? We... maybe... Maple's eyes shrank to pinpricks. Aha! Triumphantly, Hal pointed a wing. I thought I saw as much on the video feed from the security cameras. You stole such an object, didn't you? And what if we did? Starlight repeated, bristling. Then allow me to regale you with a tale of woe, How sang, leaning back. That stone is nothing less than the very heart of a mythical windigo, stripped of life by powers incomprehensible and rendered to an enchanted stone, a very bastion of hatred that thousands of years ago in the times of legend was the grounds for the undoing of an entire civilization. Theoretically, they should be as infinite as the Windigos themselves, which I can assure you do exist. However, as far as I am concerned, there are two of them. They were given to my brother and I as gifts by our father, you see. That's Neon Nova, in case you had forgotten. I hadn't forgotten, Maple droned. So how does your father just happen to have hearts of monsters that haven't been seen outside of legends, ever? That is something that is best left to the realm of shadows, How happily rebuffed, continuing. So, my brother and I were content in our share of ancient history. Until one day, about a year ago, our fortress hideout was raided by Yakyakistan. They broke in in search of treasure and stole our two most prized possessions. It was very disheartening. Filled with a desire for righteous vengeance and, more importantly, to reclaim our inheritance, the two of us set out on an epic quest of infiltration and sabotage to take back what was ours. Mostly that meant posing as mercenaries for a year after a family friend in Yakyakistan's government was able to deduce that the hearts were bound for Ironridge. Wait a minute. Starlight narrowed her eyes. When you were acting incompetent in front of the Stone District guards, how held a wing across his chest? Alas, whatever you are about to predict may well be correct. We joined with a company hired by Herman himself and ultimately obtained information relating to the precise nature of the packages, that there would be one heart in each crate, and that they were being delivered by a griffin who would arrive by way of the old Susan waterway. So, I acted in hopes that I could force the crates to be opened then and there, and might steal the treasure and flee before I could be stopped. Unfortunately, I was defeated and rendered unable to stop the crates from being taken well beyond my reach. Yet still... It sounds as though you have rescued at least half of my inheritance from the clutches of the yaks. Might this hope of mine be truth? Maple stood defensively. Are you announcing your intent to rob us? Hardly. How shook his head. Actually, should you still possess it, I was going to ask if you wish to hire me. To... Maple narrowed her eyes. Hire you. How shrugged. 
Well, you seem to have something I very much want, and also appear to be in need of a bodyguard. Conveniently, I happen to have some matter of combat experience and am used to working such jobs. It sounds like a trade that would benefit us both, does it not? That depends on how much we can trust you, Maple sighed. Think of it this way, How said with a grin. You can trust me a lot more if you know you have something I want. First off, you might steal it, Maple pointed out, once we show you where it is. And second, if it really is dangerous, should I really let you have it? Well, what were you going to do with it? How asked suspiciously. Keep it away from the defense force, Maple admitted. I didn't know there were two. Hmm. How scratched his chin. Let's put it this way. How hard would it be for someone to get it where it is right now? To get it? Maple looked up. They'd have to hurt me or convince me to surrender it. To find it if they didn't already know? Impossible. Brilliant! How tapped his forehoofs. Then please, I implore you to keep it there. It isn't, um, somehow on your person, is it? Maybe, Maple said. Look, how huffed Scrink his shoulders. If I did anything to steal it, I had to carry it all around through the stone and sky districts to escape, and that would mean bailing on Neon and the other one. I'd have to hang on to it even longer if I wanted to get those. So, as long as you've got it somewhere safe, I want it to stay there. And if you're protecting it, that means me protecting you. You don't need to be all maybe about this. I won't rip you off. I won't do anything shady to you. It would make no sense for me. Maple hesitated and sighed. My brand lets me store objects that are smaller than me. It's unfair. How whistled. Okay, that's a pretty good hiding place. Guess I really do have to protect you, huh? He winked. In other words, the Howinator will follow you to his dying breath. Or until you consider my service adequate and give me the heart and payment, or simply to get rid of me. Though I implore you to hide it until, at the very least, we have a better hiding place, or an easy avenue of escape from the city. Starlight? Maple looked down at the filly. What do you think about this? We can use all the allies we can get, and it isn't like we have anything better to do with that orb. Still, I'm somehow uneasy about this. Starlight tilted her head and thought. Well, you can't get rid of him, can you? And he's asking for nothing up front, and I'm pretty sure I can beat him in a fight if you get in danger. How stood back, respectfully allowing them to make their decision. I guess that's that then, Maple sighed, straightening up. Welcome to the team, How, or whatever our group is. Yes! How pumped a wing. I promise you, you will not regret this. End of chapter 200